Busher Baby, Star Trek Lady, Tiny Maya in her hand, X-Men Eyed, Donut Smile, Tiny Pinata Baruch is his man. That's us. Tiny Piñata Baruch We're entertaining all the gays We hope you love what we put together On Live and Queer, it's our show today a duet, y'all. Welcome to Live and Queer, QCC's new queer arts show. We have a really fun show for you today with my hilarious guest, Baruch Porras Hernandez. Baruch created the really fun Instagram comic and touring show, Tiny Baruch. And so we're going to welcome him with uh, my special co-host for today, Tiny Maya. Say hello, Tiny Maya. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to talk to Tiny Baruch today and Big Baruch. But before we talk to them, I have something to ask you, Maya. Oh, oh, okay. I, I thought we were ready to go. We we did the song and everything. All right, hold on. Let me see. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Everyone, um, Tiny Maya has asked if she could say something to you before we start. So let's hear what she has to say. Hi, everyone. It's me, Tiny Maya. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We may be tiny right now, but we want to grow big and show folks how amazing queer art is. So take your big old finger and press that tiny little button right now. And Chorizo agrees, don't you, Tiny Chorizo? Oof, oof. <laughs> Thanks, Tiny Maya and Tiny Chorizo. You might hear him growling a little bit <laughs> or snoring in the background. Um, but yeah, those are my co-hosts for today. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's introduce the fabulous, the gorgeous, the wonderful Baruch. Baruch Boras Hernandez, everyone. Hi, how's it going? Hi. Oh my gosh, am I frozen yet again? Hello, beautiful queer people. This is Baruch from the future. You may have noticed that I freeze a lot during this show. So whenever I freeze, you're going to see a beautiful drawing of me, Tiny Baruch. I've been following your work. I'm not a stalker, I swear, but I'm really excited to just chat with you. Um, but first, before we get into some of your art, I did want to ask you a somewhat serious question. Um, I, I don't know if you've noticed, I am wearing my little X-Men um, emblem here just for you, because I know you like the X-Men. Um, I was once uh, Tormenta Storm's uh, Latina cousin for Halloween. <laughs> but I do know that um, Rogue is one of your favorite X-Men. Is that oh my not God. right? Yes. Yeah. I do want to say that on the record, Storm is the best X-Men. But Rogue is my favorite X-Men. Rogue has been always been my all-time favorite X-Men just because like, I remember being like a queer closeted little boy who wanted to touch other boys, but I couldn't because I was told that being queer we were told that if you, I was told that if I touch other boys in a loving way, that we would all die of AIDS. So when I saw mm -hmm. a character in the X-Men that was kind of an outcast, uh, used to be a, a, a lot of people don't know, Rogue was a supervillain for the longest time and she couldn't touch those she loved. I was like, oh, 
is this character for me? And I've loved her ever since. People don't understand how Rogue is a symbol of um, restorative justice because she was a bad mm-hmm. guy. She was a terrorist. But Professor X knew she was raised by terrorists. She was 16 when she beat up the Avengers. And Professor X was like, yeah, you've done bad things, but you want to be a good person. So instead of putting her in jail, he put her to work. He let her join the X-Men and he helped her. And and she hasn't gone back. I just I love her so much. She's just an incredible character. We'll talk a little bit more about our sort of our pop culture loves. But I really want to show the audience as well um, a little bit of your art, like what you do. So how about um, you give it to us? I, I feel like you have a little something for us to prepared. Are you ready? I have two pages for y'all. This one is titled Survival of the Queerest. Hello, my name is Baruch Porras Hernandez, and I'm here to tell you we are going to make it. We're going to make it through this. Hopefully all of us, but most importantly, the queers. Why? Because for thousands and thousands of years, we've been doing the gay nasty. And even though we can't reproduce, we keep coming back, bitches! Evolution is all adapt, survive, reproduce. We're like, adapt, survive, be fabulous, have sex, be fabulous, have sex. And somehow, we keep popping up in the gene pool, baby, hey! Long ago, they used to burn us at the stake. It's where the word faggot comes from. We are still here. They tried putting pink triangles on us and erasing us. And now we put a giant big ass pink triangle on one of the biggest hills in San Francisco. And we are still sucking dick. (laughs) I'm not saying many of us didn't die. So many of us have died, especially in this city, San Francisco, for us to be in this room together, listening to my dick jokes. But so many of us are still here. And that is what I'm telling you all even though it seems super bleak. And every day we see our LGBT rights be more and more in danger. Trans kids more and more under attack. Queer people in danger all over the world. War here in the US, white supremacists getting more disgusting and inhuman. I still say we are going to make it. And if we don't, a lot of us are not going out without a fight. I don't have a lot of upper body strength, but my jaw is pretty strong from all the putting things in my mouth. So I'm pretty sure I would rip out a Nazi throat or two in my, with my teeth before they take me down. Back when the racist orange bag of puke was made president, I started to fantasize about the many ways I was going to survive if this shit got Handmaid's Tale. One of the ways was full transformation. I'd shave my beard, lose a hundred pounds, bleach my hair, and get as white basic as I possibly can. There would be no more Baruch Porras Hernandez. There would only be Barry Peterson Henderson. (laughs) I'd go from a chubby Mexican queer to a lovely normal white guy named Barry Peterson Henderson. No, officer, I haven't seen any Mexicans. I don't see color. No, officer. (laughs) Homosexuals? I would never, never heard of them. I've only heard of Jesus and vagina. I'd marry a woman (laughs) and make love to her the only way straight people have sex, right? By throwing Bibles at her pelvis. That's how straight people have sex, right? (laughs) Throwing Bibles at women's pelvises, screaming, baby house, baby house, (laughs) trickle down economics. (laughs) A lot of people have asked me, Baruch, how do you keep making art when all this shit keeps falling apart? And I say, I ask myself that question every day. And to be honest, um, I cry a lot, but I also think of everything we have accomplished. And I turn to our ancestors. I turn to all the incredible queer artists that have come before us. And most importantly, I turn to our queer youth. They are doing some amazing things right now, people. And if you're not supporting them and following our queer artists and our queer youth, what the fuck are you doing with your life? What the fuck are we fighting for? I was sitting in a coffee shop the other day being super sad about the world. And I overheard a conversation in the table next to me. A 13 year old boy was talking to his mom about how he was hoping to wear something cool to the school dance. He was excited because him and his boyfriend, him and his boyfriend, we're planning on wearing matching shirts. And I had to hide my tears as this old queer Gen Xer because I was like, after all the shit we've gone through, a young 13 year old boy 
who is taking his boyfriend to a school dance, is not only talking about it to his mother, but his only concern is what they're going to wear. I cried a little. I had to hide it. I didn't want to creep him out. But that's beautiful. That's progress. Things are getting better. We just have to keep going. So much has been achieved by people like us. Think about all the people like us in the past who fought and died to give us the freedoms we have today. They didn't have cell phones or cars or the internet, but they believed in love, truth, literature, community, lesbians, gays, right. trans. Even before they had the word trans, trans people were doing amazing things, science, justice, and they never quit. And I'm sure, y'all, that they got depressed too. <laughs> It's okay to be sad about awful shit, but we cannot let those bastards win. I have days where I do let them win. I lay in bed, I eat an entire pizza, watch way too much porn, don't answer emails, but I only do it for a day. Okay, for maybe like a week or a month. <laughs> but I get up, I answer my emails, I eat another pizza. I watch just the right amount of porn and support my OnlyFans boys. And then I get my ass back to work. I call my parents, tell my friends I love them, volunteer for shit, push people to vote and i also sleep with a lot of men uh a okay. lot of men you know people say when they go low we go high for me i say when they say gay is wrong i put my face on a dong when they say gay is bad i sleep with their dad hola papi when they say gay sex <laughs> is an abomination i'll put penises in my mouth all across the nation so don't let those bastards win don't give up Watch porn, eat cake, and have all the motherfucking donuts you want. Gracias. So that's the yes. end of that. <laughs> like, I hope I didn't freeze through that because I was reading it on my. I, I probably was like, and of course I'm frozen right now <laughs> because that's. No, it was so great. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. That's everything. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um. So, you have your your beautiful art i mean and i know you say you're not a professional but to me like i don't know if you've seen my doodles but <laughs> i like to doodle <laughs> and they are terrible um but maybe no, that's an aesthetic. don't say um, that Come on. <laughs> that's an aesthetic no 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 no. you're amazing and also your writing your performance but you've also done um some work to do to bring in other artists you know i remember seeing you at um, the queer open mic. I think that's when I first saw you out in in the mission, out in the world um, with Blythe. Um, you co-hosted Blythe Baldwin. So, yeah, yeah. Um, they're amazing, and also you you put together uh, Donde Está Mi Gente. So can you tell me a little bit about kind of the joys and challenges of bringing Latinx artists together? I mean, we're such a nebulous, you know, we're not really a race. We're a combination of so many, you know, um, cultures and ethnicities. We have Afro-Latinos, Asian Latinos. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so <laughs> tell me a little bit about the joys and challenges of of putting that um, project together. Yeah, well, Donde Esta Mi Gente right now, I'm calling it a uh, Latinx performance series. Um, and I basically started it because I, I feel like a lot of us, you know, I grew up in the East Bay with a lot of uh, immigrant families, but not a lot of immigrant artists and not a lot of Latino artists. The East Bay can be very white. I grew up in Albany, California, even though I moved here when I was nine with my parents from Toluca, Mexico. And I did not grow up knowing a lot of local Latino artists. You know, I have a lot of friends that grew up in the mission and they know they're Latino artists. They know they're, you know, queer Latino elders. I didn't grow up with a lot of that. So when I started doing art and performing and spoken word in the Bay Area, I often found myself being the only Latino in the room on stage. Mm. I would do these lineup shows, you know, where it was like five white guy poets and me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, and I realized I had never done a show with all Latinx people. And so I went mm. to Galeria de la Raza. I said, I have an idea for a grant. That I, I want to do this thing. And I love that Ani Rivera was like, let's do it. So we've been performing ever since. I've learned a lot. Uh, and I've gotten to know and get to know such incredible Latino artists, mostly queers. Like that first one, I, I had a lot of straight people in that first one. But afterwards, I noticed I wanted more. I wanted like I was like, you know what? I don't have to book 
straight artists. They get booked a lot. So I've been mostly trying to focus on women and queer people. Um, and the last couple of years, I I, uh, I I had a contract with KQED. They were like, what's really important to Donna Stami Henta right now? And I was like, um, helping end stigma and erasure and racismo. So we pledged mm. for a year of 2021 to only book Afro-Latinos. And it wasn't hard. Mm. All of the organizers that I encounter are like, oh, it's so hard trying to find uh, people of color. It's so hard. And I'm like, mm, no, it's, it's not, not that hard. <laughs> it's really yeah. not. You're just, come on. Like, what the fuck? Uh, I get yelled at a lot by uh, organizers. When And the, what's funny is I don't even like say anything mean to them. Some of them are my friends. All I do is like, hey, I noticed your last show had a lot of white people in it. Do you need help finding people of color? Because I got lists. Like, feel free to email yeah. me. I'll even do it for free. And some of them get so upset because they think I'm calling them a racist. I mean, it is racist, mm -hmm. but I don't think they know the impact of what they do when they have a show. They're like, I had a black guy in it. Yeah, you had a black guy, but you had like only one black guy and then the rest were all white people. Anywho, um, so uh, it's taught me a lot. And uh, we did that whole year focusing just on Afro-Latinos. We're not going to stop, of course. Uh, a lot of our future shows are going to focus as much of, uh, as we can on women, trans people, uh, the darker skin Latino and Latin, Latine and Latina and Latina keys. I say all of those because I love all of them. You know, I know that the old Latinos get mad when I say Latina keys. I'm like, deal with it, learn, grow. I know <laughs> right. a lot of the younger, the younger queers are like, actually it's Latine. We're no longer allowed to say Latina keys. And I'm like, cool. Okay. Just please don't yell at me. Um, <laughs> right. You know, right? I'm just like, whatever you want, baby. I'm just here for you. I'm just trying to do a show for you. You know, um, right. it taught me that uh, I feel like a, a lot of us, like you and myself, being San Francisco queer artists, we've had to become like mystique. We've had to literally morph, transmorph, grow, shapeshift to survive in an environment that is like tech centered, for profit centered, aggressive as fuck. And that's what Dona Stamihenta has taught me to do because the first year was so successful. People were like, I'll write you a grant. You'll become a nonprofit. You'll get a 501c3. You'll get a board. And I saw that as a road to disaster. I mm. think the area, even though it's got a lot of beautiful nonprofits, in my experience, all of them are literally grasping, trying to survive. Unless they have a lot of money. If they have a lot of money, they have a lot of skeletons in the closet. If they have a lot of success, they've pissed off a lot of people because people are humans and make mistakes. And I saw myself turning Donde Esta Mi Gente into this huge organization. A friend of mine was like, this could be your day job. And I was like, I think that would not be good for it. I think I would become, uh, I'd have tunnel vision on how to make this my day job. And I would think it was all about me when I really wanted it to be this amorphous, vagabond, nomadic thing that just creates opportunities mm -hmm. for other Latinos. And so, yes, I pay myself when I do a show, but my first priority is to pay La, La, Latinx artists. And so we've done mm -hmm. collaborations with libraries, universities, Yerba Garden Center, KQED is one of our greatest sponsors. I'm really grateful to them. And they basic, so basically, instead of turning it into an organization, I just do a show and people pay us. And when people pay us, uh, we do these great shows. And so I, I feel like Donde Esta Mi Gente could be a metaphor for how to survive as an artist in San Francisco. You got to become this like amorphous sort of blob that's always going to survive to bring the goods. And so I'm, I'm really happy that it's still around. And I see it as one of the nicest things I've been able to do in the Bay Area. Yeah, no, I've I'm super been appreciative to see all of the the different shows that you've brought and it, and to see newer artists, younger artists, you know, elders. Like, I mean, it's 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 nice to see that, and it's nice to see people mix it up because they're just like one or two people that they call when they want, um, you know, a Latinx or you know Latino or Latina, mm -hmm. you know, um, artist, and yeah. and yeah, you know, and sometimes our our indigeneity gets erased as well as, you yes. know, all of, all of the other specifics about our languages. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just super appreciative of that. So I'm, I'm glad to hear the philosophy behind it. Cause also the, I've seen collectives 
rise and fall and yeah and we do we do deserve to to eat and to pay our rent and and to create art and like i said people turn to art in the darkest of times and and mm-hmm. um so so yeah that's so great and yeah and it's like when you talk about latinx i i i want i come back i think again about the x men you know and and all this um all your inspirations like are there is there any other kind of pop culture or tv shows or you know um that you that you turn to or you've been turning to i mean so many but right now i am obsessed with so all my life people were like oh you're a nerd do you know about star wars and star trek and i'm like eh, they're okay i like i i, I like them but i was never like When it came to nerddom, I was an X-Men fan. And so people would talk to me about Star Trek and I would be like, yeah, it's cool. But I was never that excited about it. But I respected it as part of that nerd trifecta, Triforce, you know, like the the D&D, Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, triangle (laughs) that builds the foundation of what it is to be a nerd. (laughs) You know, I respect Uh Star Trek, even though I didn't know anything. I mean, I watched the show. But anywho, right now I am obsessed with Star Trek Discovery. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> Do you know what you I'm talking know. about? Oh, oh my, my god. god. I'm so happy yes. you know what I'm talking about. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Oh yes, my god. It, that, has, that has been how I survived the pandemic. I started Same. with season three. I started with season three and then went back and did rewatches of season one, two, and four. And actually um, with some friends, we started a, a podcast of, about it. And that was, you know, when we were lonely, we basically did an episode by episode watch of, of each of the, and I was like kind of the newbie cause I had, I had seen Star Trek uh, Next Generation. That's that's kind of what I grew up with. Classic, beautiful, but, Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and but, but what's great about Star Trek Discovery is that there's people of color and queer folks in it. Yes. I'm like Wilson Cruz, Anthony Papp. Dude, it's like the X Men of Star Trek. It is like led oh, by some I like strong, what you did there. intelligent, right? Amazing women of color, amazing women led storylines. Women are literally like breaking dudes' jaws and being scientists in this show. I'm just sad yeah. more people don't know about it. Uh, also, the gay storylines. I, I think I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I was like, I kind of don't need therapy right now because every time I watch Star Trek Discovery, I burst into tears. That writing is so good. Uh, oh my gosh, I love that show so much. And it's so gay. And there's so many people of color in it. I just, I, I really love it. What season are you on? I'm right now in about to end the second season. So no spoilers of season three. It is literally giving me so much life right now. Yes. Oh, oh my God. We could go on and on about this, but um, I would really love to at least get to talking about your, one of your newer projects as well. That's been an ongoing project. Expectacular. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. I would love to talk about Espectacular. I'm just bringing up some of the uh, art right now so that y'all can uh, check it out. Um, Basically, um, I am working on a graphic novel called Espectacular, which is about a group of uh, heroes, I guess, who are all queer and Latinx, queer as fuck, and they have superpowers. Um, it's been a, it's a commission project from MACLA, which stands for Movi- Movimiento Artístico Cultu- Cultural Latinoamericano. And, uh, and they're in San Jose. They're amazing. I love them. They've been so patient with me uh, because they know I'm trying to do a thousand things at the same time. And basically they were like, hey, um, the way it came about was uh, I was I work, I work for the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. And my boss knows I like to draw. So he got me this huge dry erase board to put next to my desk. And he was like, whenever you feel like drawing, uh, draw on here. And so I would draw Storm on National Women's Day. I would draw, Mm. you know, I would draw like, um, you know, I would draw like Batman saying, Happy Folsom from my bat cave to you. You know, it's stuff to cheer up my coworkers. And then one day Pulse happened and like all of us, I had my guts ripped out of my body emotionally when that happened. Pulse just like hit me like a truck, like everyone else who's a, a person of color and queer in this country. And so I wanted to draw something on the dry erase board to acknowledge it and to like, you know, cheer my coworkers up. And so I decided to draw a bunch of Latino 
superheroes, and I could not think of any. Even though mm. I am a, a super queer, super comic book fan, I had to really rack my brain. I thought, okay, Richter from the X-Men, the first X-Men to come out, gay Mexican guy. I thought of America Chavez right away, and that was all I could think about. I was like, oh, man. And those are people my coworkers had no idea who they were. And so I drew mm. Richter, America Chavez. I drew Miles Morales, Spider-Man. I drew Blue Beetle from DC. I drew the breakdancing guy, Vibe, from DC. And I drew the Latina Spider-Woman. And nobody knew who they were. <laughs> my coworkers came in that day and saw this drawing of all these superheroes from mainstream comics with a sign saying, we stand with Orlando. And my coworkers were like, who are these people? And I was like, what the fuck? It is 2000, you know, I forgot what year it was because um, I'm tired. But uh, how is it that that there isn't enough um, knowledge of, of Latino superheroes in the mainstream and even in the Castro where I work? And how is it that there's only two gay Latinos that I can think of? And so the next day, Makla literally called me. They were like, hey, we would like to work with you. Do you have any ideas for a project? And I was like, yes, I do. Y'all are going to pay me to create some queer Latinx superheroes, and we're going to do a graphic novel, and it's going to be awesome. And they were like, done. And so I don't regret it, but oh my God, Maya, doing comic books? It's so hard. <laughs> oh my Lord. The hardest thing I've ever done out of all the things I do, uh, uh, um, stand up comedy is terrifying and the most mm. difficult thing I do, but not as close to making a comic book. My heart goes out to any person who works in the comic book world because I did not know it was such hard work. We've been doing it for years and oh my Lord. So, bam. So, there is one of the first images that you see uh, for Espectacular. That uh, person in the middle is called Galaxia. She Ooh. is an Afro-Latina superhero. She wow. is the universe. Uh, and in the back, there are other heroes that um, are in the comic, but they're not the main characters. Galaxia is one of the main characters, but the real uh -huh. main characters are going to be revealed when the comic book comes out in June. So um, yes. and then there's one of the characters... Uh, oh they're a non-binary character. Uh, in this world, there's another group called the Peace Champions. They're not the main characters, but they're they're part of the story. Uh, there's Galaxia again, uh, looking amazing. She's actually one of the most powerful beings in the planet. Uh, there is another one of our heroes uh, who is awesome, and uh, yes. that's a bunch of them. Chubby right superheroes there. for the win. Oh, yeah, we are bringing you uh, everything. We're bringing you chubby superheroes. Um, we're bringing you trans superheroes. Um, a lot of the characters were created by fellow writers. I just like Donde Esta Mi Gente, I wanted this to be a uh, group project. So I reached out to other Latino uh, writers who are gay or queer. And I was like, do you want to create some superheroes with me? And they said yes. So one of the characters is created by Kay Nielsen, a local writer and stand-up comic who is a Panamanian, mm -hmm. a proud trans guy. We have Luna Merbruja, who is a writer and a poet, also a stand-up comic. Oh, yeah. Uh, she okay. created a character named Alacran, who is a trans character. Uh, Kayla yes. Hernandez created Sway, Terry Blas. Yes. So they all helped me create the characters. And I'm writing, I, I finished writing it already. The artist, Zip Alegria, is working on the art right now. Um, so the, that's the, so the great. We might maybe made. we should have them back on when 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 you're finished with the project. That That'd would be, be so cool. amazing. Yeah, um, I'm just so excited to see the rest of this work come together. You're doing so many great things, Baruch. I am so happy you were able to come and talk with us today. Um, we're running out of time, but uh, you know, I you're doing so many beautiful things in the world. <laughs> I'm so glad you were able to share with us. I'm excited for all your projects. You ever need a cheerleader or someone to, you know, whatever, feed you when you're feeling sad. Um, we're all oh, here for you. Thank you. thank you so much for joining us, Baruch, and all of you out there. Um, Baruch's graphic novel, Espectacular, comes out in June. So keep an eye on his socials for updates. He's at Baruch. Borras Hernandez on Instagram and Baruch is on fire on Twitter. He's also posts new tiny Baruch comics there from time to time. 
And his books, I Miss You Delicate and Lovers of the Deep Fried Circle, are available from Sibling Rivalry Press. Links for everything are going to be in the description. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video and QCC. This beautiful tiny show needs some big help from you to get noticed by the algorithms. You want to see more of Baruch? We have much more that we couldn't fit in the show. Click the video on your screen to watch him unveil a brand new, never before seen Tiny Baruch comic.